Okay, there are many ways to actually create the the spot colouring effect, but the one I'm going to use is one I always tend to use, I find it the easiest. But before we go into that, I've just got to get this image looking a bit better. Um, it's just been taken from a raw shot from DPP Professional, so it's been through that stage. Now it just needs to go through the final stage to get the colour looking right and to straighten it. So first of all, I want to straighten this horizon. So by doing that, or to do that, I basically select everything in the photo. So we can either do Control A, that brings up running ants around the photo, or you can just simply click and drag around the outside of the image. <clears throat> Secondly, I need some point of reference to actually get the horizon looking straight. So I need to bring up the grid. You can either do that by going into View, Show, and Grid or you can use the shortcut which is control and speech mark as you can see here and that is normally next to the zero on your on your uh, keyboard so if we do that there we go we've got the grid now we need to straighten this so we need to be able to actually move it so if you go to edit and then free transform or the shortcut again is control T then it bring, changes the running ants into this uh, movable frame so if we now zoom in a bit to get the horizon looking a bit closer and then we start to pull it round just click anywhere in the grey area and pull it round until the horizon is looking straight which is about there and then you can either double click on the photo or press the tick here so we'll double click on the photo and that's now straightened the image but what we're left with is these corners that need to be cut off and we've still got the grid up so if I just do control speech mark that gets rid of the, the grid and now I need to use this crop tool to crop into the photo slightly so if we chop away a lot of the outside get it down the legs as much as possible making sure to stay inside the uh, the black marks there I think about there we'll do so we now double click inside to crop the image and we've got a cropped image what I want to do now is get rid of this person down here so if we use the clone tool and if I do control alt and zero that brings the image up to 100% so we can see what we're doing a lot easier now the, the clone tool if you press alt and click anywhere on the screen that's the bit you're going to start cloning from so I want to keep this beach looking quite the same as it is now so if I control click there and then come across and start painting it's going to get rid of her sorry my darling and then we're going to do the same up here just bring that across same here, control, and then just get the feet, and then also the shadows. Don't overlook things like the reflections, we'll get rid of those as well. I think that should have got rid of her. Yep, great. Okay, now I'm going to do the same again control alt naught 100%, and I'm going to use the healing brush to get rid of any blemishes or ablutions that are on the screen. Now, she's got some spots here so we're going to get rid of those same as the clone tool you just alt click the area you want to actually clone and then just get rid of there's a bruise there we'll get rid of that so I think we're just about done there's a bit of a scratch there just get rid of that there we go okay I think there's a slight bruise on the leg there I like nice clean images so we'll just get rid of all of these because this will be used for a stock image and also for magazines so we now have a clean image and I just want to now quickly change the, the colour settings so what I tend to find is that most digital images have a, a colour cast red and yellow so I want to get rid of those and emphasise this blue sky and the skin tones so if we go to image adjustments colour balance I'm going to move the slider we're on the mid tones and I'm going to move the slider to the left to get rid of some of the red and then the bottom slider to the right to enhance the blues and get rid of some of the yellow cast and then I'm going to click on highlights and do the same and there I've deepened the blue sky and we've lost a bit of colour saturation but we can get that back in a minute but for now if you click the preview button you can see what you've done already the hat here has become a bit more natural not so red and yellow casted the skin looks a bit more natural and the sky looks bluer so I'm happy with that so we click OK and now I just want to bring up the color saturation so if we go to image adjustments color saturation and just move the slider up slightly 
get the skin tones up and the sky looking a bit bluer and hit OK. I also like to use the, the sponge tool on saturation with a, a flow of around 5% just, just to add in little bits more of a saturation just to enhance the photo a bit more. So now we've actually got a photo that I'm quite happy with. Bear in mind that we're going to be losing most of the colour anyway but I'm happy with that photo as it is for now so we can save that and I'm going to save that as C for colour just for the purposes of this tutorial. Save it at full resolution JPEG and there we're done. We've got the first of the, the two images needed to do the spot colouring so let's just save that there. So now I need a black and white photo to to actually get the spot colouring going so I'm going to convert this using Kevin Kubota's uh, tools. If I go into the actions palette here you can see here we've got three different black and white conversions. You've got the new black and white mid bright, black and white and mocha black and white. I normally use the new black and white so we're going to click on that and then click down here and click the play button to set it running and there you go we've got a black and white image. At the moment it looks fine but the face is a bit too dark so I'm actually going to flatten the layer that, that created so we've now got a, a black and white JPEG. Go back into the actions, back into Kevin Kubota's action tools and use this one now, the digital fill in flash. So if we click that and set it running, I've now got about the right size tool and I'm on opacity 45 and flow 45 which is going to give me quite a good fill in flash. So if I just zoom in, control alt and zero to bring up the face 100% and then I just start brushing where I want to fill in the flash. You can see there it's already making a difference. So if we just do that, and then I'm going to click again to do a little bit more. I love this tool. It, it really does give the effect of a fill in flash without actually losing any of the, the saturation or the, uh, the contrast. So if I go back out again now, you can see now that it's made quite a nice job of highlighting the areas on the face that were shadowed. So I'm quite happy with that so I need to flatten that layer and now I've got a black and white image that I'm happy with that I can use for the spot colouring so if I save this save as B for black and white full resolution bear in mind you have to keep exactly the same dimensions of the photo otherwise this won't work so now we've got two images we've got the black and white image if I just bring up the colour image there we go we've got the colour image as well so now I need to get the colour of the areas that I want into the black and white photo. So we'll do that next. And the way that I do that, I actually use the selection tool here and then I simply click on the, the black and white image and while I'm staying clicked I literally drag it over and drop it onto the colour image like this. So that's now in place on top, it's overlaying the colour image so you've got um, two layered image there at the moment. If I just get rid of this one because I don't need it anymore and we can work on this photo. So now the simplest way to actually get the colour to come through is to use the eraser tool and what we're going to do is just rub out the bits of the black and white that we don't want anymore and that will reveal the colour image below. So if I do Control alt 0 again to bring up 100% I need a slightly smaller brush so I can work quite accurately. If I bring this down to about 46 pixels, there we go, I can start now basically click and just erase away the top layer of the black and white image to reveal the colour below. So if I just do this, I'm not going to do this as accurately, as accurately as I normally would do because I'm just doing it for the tutorial but normally we'd blow up a lot more like this and really work on the fine details of the image. So let's just get this done. Oh, gonna, if you ever go wrong just do control alt and z and you erase the last stage that you did so trying not to go over again if we just do this now you're going to need sometimes a smaller brush to get into the, the finer areas so if we go a lot smaller there go across and up and then we'll go closer over there so all we're doing is basically rubbing away the black and white top layer to reveal the colour below and you can do this for whichever part of the image you think will benefit from it. So let's just get rid of this colour in the sarong, you can see there it's coming through straight away. If I just do the main areas then I can use a smaller brush to get the finer details. So there we go, and then zoom in. 
it's actually quite therapeutic. I enjoy doing this because it's a it's like a, a thing we used to do at school where you had a colour image and you put black wax over it and then use the pin to actually lose the black wax to create a colourful image below. So if we just get rid of all of this, like I said, I'm not going to go hugely accurate. I'm just doing this to show you how to actually get the colour to come through. Once you've done this, you can try on any image you like. Just find a prominent colour or a dominant colour, like a red rose or a um, article of clothing, and then just do the same as I've done here, and just bring through that colour. Let's go onto the skin there a bit. Let's go back a few stages. All right, let's just leave that for now. Like I said, I'm not going hugely accurate here. When you're doing yours, if they're going to be for display purposes, that kind of thing, make sure you get it absolutely perfect. So there we go, just do this bit here. It's great because when you're this close you don't realise what, what you're actually doing, you're just getting rid of the, the black and white, but when you zoom out you see what you've actually done, it looks quite good. So we're nearly done now, just quickly do this little bit. And last bit there, so now if I control zero, see the full image, and there we have the final photo. You've basically got the, the original black and white with a bit of colour coming through from the, the bikini and then we can simply save that oh, sorry we need to layer that flatten the image because you've still got the two images the color and the black and white by flattening the layer you've now got a single JPEG image in duotone or spot coloring and that's basically it